I'm very conflicted about this watch. I do like it. Uh, I think it offers fantastic value for money for a retail price of £400. I paid uh, £340 for it, uh, brand new. I got a 15% discount. So I think it offers great value for money. And I do like it. All the functions are good. I like um, most things about it. There's a few things I don't like about it. But I'm not going to keep it. And the reason is because of this one. This is my SKX. And because of this, after wearing this one, I'm thinking, do I really want to keep the GMT when I've got my SKX? Now, this does offer the extra function of the GMT. For me, that, that is a plus. I do use the GMT a lot. As you can see, it's, it's at different times at the moment. Um, a lot of people who buy these GMTs, I'm sure a lot of people who will buy this GMT, will keep uh, the GMT time as their local time as well. So I don't really see the point of buying a GMT if you're not really going to be using it for its design purpose. Um, if you look on Instagram, you'll see just about everyone who's got a GMT, they'll have the same time zone synced up. So what is the point? But after wearing this watch, it is basically a SKX with a GMT function, which is great. I like the, the SKX case, it fits me really well. And that's the reason I don't want to own this watch because I've got that watch. If they'd made the GMT in a different case, that would be in a, in a plus. Again, don't get me wrong, I really like this watch. Had I not had the uh, SKX, I would definitely have kept this watch, no doubt about it. But there's a few niggly points that I think I need to point out, um, especially if you're in the market of buying this watch, these things may annoy you a bit. Now, the first thing is, I like change uh, straps. I am not a big fan of Jubilee bracelets. I'm not a fan of bracelets, full stop, really. And I always change the, the straps, um, either to a rubber or leather or, or something else. And this one was so difficult to get off. Now, it does have holes in the lugs. You can just see there but they are tiny and I had real struggle getting the, uh, the, the, the toolbar in there to, to push the pins down and it, my toolbar is just a standard toolbar it, these holes are just small and you can just see them there look how small they are toolbar actually got stuck inside and uh, bottom of it snapped off and I had to use a pair of pliers to, to take it out and that was a bit of a, a yank to get it out as well and another thing, when I got the, the pins out, the pins were just standard, normal pins. Now, Seiko are quite well known for having these really thick pins. If you go on eBay and just type in Seiko tool, uh, Seiko um, bars, uh, spring bars, you'll find the really thick ones. Uh, and they're just known for having really thick uh, spring bars. Now, some people may say, oh, it's because of the, the bracelet, they need to put in slightly thinner uh, spring bars. But not true because my um, uh, tuner had um, a, a bracelet and that had really th the normal thick spring bars. Same with my Monster. Uh, both of the watches came on bracelets and both of them had the really thick uh, spring bars. Now, and that's not a big deal for me, really, to be honest. It doesn't matter with the thick uh, string uh, the bars because the majority of the time they wouldn't have fit it in my straps anyway because they're so thick but it's just one of those things thinking well why have they done that but yeah such a pain to get this bracelet off now the bracelet is a lot better it's got solid end links which is i mean kind of a big deal really for a price uh watch at this price uh i can remember rolexes uh 20 years ago uh even 10 years ago i think uh they did they had hollow uh, end links uh, and also hollow um uh, links uh, in the bracelet so for 400 pounds or really if you're paying more than three 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 hundred and forty pounds for your you're overpaying you'll definitely be able to get a 15 percent discount no matter what and if you they don't offer it to you just walk away and buy it from somewhere else so that's one thing which kind of annoyed me a bit the other thing is the bezel now it's a friction bezel so it's got no click and it doesn't lock anywhere, which yes, fair enough for a GMT, it's a lot easier to be able to move it left and right. But as I was wearing it, the bezel started moving by itself. 
uh, with few few knocks here and you I mean not knocks really just every day I had didn't slam it against a wall or, or a door frame or anything else like that these are just regular day-to-day uh, -day use and I found that it kept moving and it wasn't big movements it was around about it didn't really go past five or this way or five that way so it was moving but if you set it it's going to constantly keep moving if I'd not moved it back it would have probably I mean it would have moved there then maybe a day later it would move further 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 kind of a pointless thing if it's going to move and this is a brand new watch so in time it's going to get looser unless you get dirt in there but it, the majority of times they will become more loose more loose so it's going to move even more why did they didn't they didn't make it a proper clicking bezel I, I don't understand I really just don't get it it would have been so much easier I would have preferred it to just go one way uh yeah if you wanted to say it, it's not just a big deal to move it all the way around yeah that that's another niggly point for me again these are all my points that I found uh, not annoying but just something that made me think yeah just another thing that added to the list of thinking yeah I don't really think I want to own it because I have an SKX and I found that a lot better the next thing is the crown now the crown is not a screw down crown why I just don't get that this is an SKX case and they're using the same crown same case so why not make it a screw down crown? It would have made the water resistant a lot better. This is a hundred meters water resistant. It's enough, you can go swimming in it. It wouldn't be any problems. But that's not such the biggest case for me. The, the, the problem for me was, this is, you can wind this manually, unlike the SKX, you can't mine manually. You've got, you've actually got to shake it when you want it to, if it stops and you haven't won it, you've got to actually shake it to get the rotor moving. Yeah. This one you can, uh, if it's not uh, wound and you've put it down. This is the 4R34, I think, movement, which a lot of people are raving about. Okay, um, it's a 4R34 movement. Um, good movement, it moves a lot smoother than that's that's in this one for sure. But you can hand, hand wind it, great. But because it's not a screw down crown and you're trying to wind it and you've got these crown guards it makes it really difficult the bottom edge can it sticks on your fingers and it's make and they, they sort of grate into your bottom of your finger when you're winding it it's very uncomfortable it's actually kind of scratching there so if you had to wind this say 40 50 times it will start hurting your finger if they'd made this a screw down crown, it would have popped out a little bit. Let me just see. And it's quite hard to get your, your nail in there. It would have popped out a little bit. So let me just show you on the SKX. So screw down crown. So as it's popped out, you see it's moved out a little bit further. It just makes that little bit easier because it's moved away from the crown guard. Easier to, to see, I'm, I'm not, even though it's not doing anything, it's effortless because of that just a millimeter or two it makes such a difference when winding it that was a bit of an annoyance i'm thinking why did they just make it a screw down crown it makes no sense to me whatsoever uh so that was another niggly point for me and the last thing well two last things the dial uh well actually three last thing i've just thought of another thing i'm not a big fan of the cyclops um, I would have much rather they'd not had the Cyclops and just ha maybe just have a normal one. If they didn't want to put the day date in there, just have the normal thing. I know some people may like it because it reminds them of a Rolex uh, GMT. I can understand why they've done it um, for people who, who don't have the money to spend on a Rolex GMT and they, they want something similar. But for me, again, these are just my points. Um, because I'm paying my own money for it, I can bring out these things. I haven't had this watch given to me, so I don't have to be all kissy kissy to say, oh, I'll say nice things about your watch. Please give me another free watch. So these are my personal points that I didn't like about it. The next thing is the markers. They've got these borders around the edge, the silver borders. I don't like those. I, in not just this watch, in any watch. Uh, I, I just It just doesn't fit for me i don't like the whole bling thing uh again going back to the skx it doesn't have any borders it's just a simple painted uh loom on there and i just think that looks so much cleaner it's much nicer i and you can see the 
The markers are a lot bigger on the SKX because it doesn't have the borders. Uh, it's just, again, a niggly point for me. I didn't like that. The, the Seiko 5 also, I think I said in the unboxing, I'm not a big fan of. Simple Seiko would have been fine and don't need to have the 5 or the S. But again, I'm being very niggly, but I was trying to make sure that if I'm going to keep the watch, it's got to be something that I'm not going to be looking at and it's going to annoy me. Other than that, I do like the watch. Those few things, I mean, you're not, never going to get a perfect watch that there's absolutely nothing you're, you're never going to like. I mean, uh, going back to the Seiko, the only thing I don't like about that watch is that it's not hand winding. You've got to shake it. But, you know, again, you're always going to find something. Well, I am anyway. But the rest of this watch, I think for the price, I think is fantastic. Um, great value for money, as I said earlier. Uh, you've got the, the see-through back, which for me, I, I would have much rather had the solid back uh, with the, the logo on there like that. I think that looks much nicer. The, the movement is nothing pretty to look at. There's nothing actually there. Again, another niggly point, but for me, it's just one of those things, again, on the box to tick to say, right, that's thing, another thing I don't like about it. Had I not had this watch, I would absolutely have kept this uh, GMT, without a doubt. Again, offers great value for money. If you're after a GMT watch, I think this should be right up there, right at the top of your list to buy. If you've got an SKX already, I think you may be in the same boat as me. You may think, yeah, do I really want to? I mean, you what you might do is you might keep it because it's such great value. But then after a while, you might just sort of put it down and then never pick it up again. And it's, that's exactly what's going to happen with this watch. I know if I keep it, it's just going to grow on a draw after a few weeks and it's never going to see the light of day again. So those are my niggly points about buying this watch. Things that I didn't like. The rest of the watch, I think, is great. Um, the movement-wise, it, it runs fine. It's not a Chrome a certified watch, so I'm not too fussed if it's well out of whack out of like three four seconds a day i haven't timed it the gmt function now another some other people also say this is not a true gmt function uh because when you pull out the crown uh you uh it's upwards i always forget which way it is so you're actually moving the gmt hand uh and a true gmt hand uh would be uh your true gmt would be the the hour marker would move instead of the GMT hand so like you've you've flown to another country which is a uh, two or three hours uh, of time zone difference so instead of moving that hand you would just move that hand straight to where you wherever your local time zone would be at that time it's a bit of a niggly point uh, for some people I don't really mind it um, I I can keep this one up to the local time so it wouldn't make much such a difference to me but I use the GMT function a lot, especially when I'm here and I need to know a different time zone. A majority of time, I wouldn't take this traveling. It wouldn't be a travel watch for me. It'd be just a normal watch I'd wear here and I could keep track of another time zone uh, when I need to. But again, I don't think many people would want to keep track of a second, second time zone. They would just leave it at, where is it? There. No, it'd be there, wouldn't it? Oh, it won't go back, so you've got to go all the way around. It would be there, wouldn't it? But those are my thoughts on this watch. Great watch. If you're in the market for a GMT, I don't think there's many out there at this price. And also you get an in-house Seiko movement. Great loom. Uh, the loom on this watch, as always with Seiko, fantastic. It's got hard lex, uh, crystal for me, not an issue. I don't really mind if it's hard lex or sapphire. I, again, I don't understand why people freak out when a watch doesn't have sapphire crystal. Um, it's people actually change their uh, crystal from hard lex to sapphire it's not really such a great benefit I don't think so uh, this has also got hard lex uh, to protect the uh, the bezel um, for me again not such a big deal it will scratch up um, I would prefer it to be uh, aluminium like uh, the other run ones I think the scratches on those do look nicer when it gets all scratched up uh, hard lex will just scratch and you'll have like glass scratches but with uh, aluminium when it scratches it'll it'll scratch the the black will go, have a silver scratch but again niggly point for me but if you're in the market for a gmt great watch great uh, value for money 
you should buy it. If those things that I've pointed out would annoy you and you've already got a um, an SKX, possibly you should look at something else.